Okay, so here we are once again with our space cats. Our empire is starting to very slowly spread itself out. Our neighbors love us. They love us so much. In fact, it's very likely that we are going to have to invest no money in making them a colony. Which would be pretty swell. They're going to be a really strong early game economy with colony, which is especially good for us. Because the galaxy is usually not overflowing with high quality ice type planets. So, our goals are going to be to set up our queue for colonization of our neighbor. We're going to continue to use our personal ship, Swift Treasure, here to explore any portions of our story that shows up and continue on with our slow meticulous takeover of the galaxy at large okay so let's just keeping in mind that we have that new colony we want to build let's look at our queue we're currently working on planetary governance and structured research in order to make best use of our loving cat neighbors, though, we need to get colony ships, and that means basic colonization and expanded colony ships. What? <laughs> Weird. We're going to put those first. Um, so I think the next thing we're going to do is work on tourism, because that's a good strong economy boost but it's like i have two things in mind either tourism or we're gonna or repairing our planet with improved colonization not sure which one we're gonna do first um hmm let's just put them all in the queue and then we could decide later so improved colonization and then we're going to do basic recreation mm. this is really important for repairing our planet uh, but i th I think strengthening on our economy will serve us better. Mm. Let's just leave it in this order. This order is fine. So we're going to do colonization, then tourism. No, colonization, then repair our planet, then tourism. Let's just take a look and see if we have any planets that actually are good enough to validate spending research time on tourism. So we have an 11, an 8, and a 7, right? That's good. Okay. Oh, we got the research breakthrough. That's great. Now we don't have to pay money to crash that, and it'll come through faster. It provides a really good building. We'll, we'll talk about that when it happens. Let's just let's just let the ru game run for a bit here. Ah, new pirates and their kitties. Uh, the cat, <laughs> the cat pirate picture is so badass. I just just absolutely loving it. Yes, we will accept paying you money. Uh, hmm. That's just such. <laughs> Just such a great picture. They absolutely love us. They absolutely love us. It may be possible that if we give them a gift right now, we'll be able to just immediately move them to a non-aggression pack. Like, just right away. I think that plus seven is because they're the same species as us 
like because we have the species bonuses i think i don't know if that's where it's from but it feels like that's where it's from hmm yeah it's worth the try let's just give them a, a big gift because we have plenty of money right now and eh, they're not quite ready to take a non-aggression agreement maybe they'll ask us for one because these will continue to go up right they should trend upwards for a bit at least and if they don't ask us for one i mean we can just give them another bribe it's fine i mean if they don't ask us for one we would have had to give the bribe anyway because we would need the uh the gifts bonus So we have a lot of these one planet systems that aren't really very good. This, though, this is the base of our first pirates right here. So now we know where they're based. I have no real plans to do anything about them. They can just take that. And we'll take that. They can just they can just hang out there. One of the problems with befriending the pirates is that it does cause a diplomatic penalty with most local empires because they will consider the pirates to be their enemies and not like that you have relationships with their enemies but it's a pretty small penalty and it's easily overcome but it is one thing to consider it may make it so that you have a hard time especially if your closest um, neighbors are people who you would just naturally we're not doing anything with our ship right now are people who you would just naturally not have good relations with Let's just put it on explore for a bit until we find something we actually want for it to do. Probably could use more exploration ships, but kind of holding the money because the we're gonna have to bribe the pirates again maybe and because the first colony ship is going to be expensive oh okay they're already offering us that treaty we wanted uh, this is for some kind of abandoned station they want us to fix might be the one from our story and this is for a research base which we are going to take might just start ignoring those don't really want them to sell us that stuff. We need our money, and I like to explore. Though it may be time to consider whether or not we have bottlenecked ourselves by not having enough explorers. Building some explorers would be good. Not sure. There are a lot of things to spend our money on. Everybody seems to be doing a good job right now of finding things to do. Yep. Oh, now that's done. So let's go to our colony and um, wait, no, that's not right. <laughs> it's not right. It's uh, that's that's sluice. I always mix those two up. Flag is colonies. No, two flags is diplomacy one flag is colonies there's our colony let's build this thing this thing helps with corruption colony development population growth just it's just good wait no it's colony happiness not growth but whatever it, it helps with a lot of different things it's a very good building and it leads us eventually towards this thing that gives us 5% research and 10% diplomacy, which is just a good building. 5% research is extraordinarily useful because all research grades the foundation of your research types. So if you need something with that requires 45 shield research to get, uh, you take your all research and add your shield research on top of it to determine whether or not you have it. Plus, it just has the regular benefit of making your research faster. 
Everything seems to be going along swimmingly. So let's just uh, let this go for a bit. So our tech seems to be doing quite well. Uh, our economy is strong enough that those two numbers are balanced. They're the same. So let's look. 100%. So they achieved 100% of their own. This is a lost ship location thing. So we've discovered a ship with a useful data core. We need to claim the ship. Uh, it's given us bonuses on the planet, which is great. Just a good event. Our luck is still strong. Nothing else has tried to destroy our planet. And our neighbor is going to be an excellent first colony. Don't think I could be happier with how this is turning out. We're just going to send our personal ship to go and explore that location. It's a new research base. Definitely always take those. The monitoring station has now been completed. <laughs> yeah, military option. We don't have a military. We don't have a military and probably won't have a military until someone actually threatens us. We're a long way away from a military. We haven't even got a single military technology. So obviously we're going to solve this with our economy because it's all we have. Um, I think, yeah, this is, this is related directly to our story. And we're, we don't need early torpedo weapons, and we don't need constant beam weapons. We're actually skipping that technology altogether, and we'll never use it. So neither of those are really very good, but, I mean, it's free, right? There's no such thing as bad free. That, that's just not true. <laughs> there is definitely a such thing as bad free. You know, something that the only thing it does is fill space and has no use. It's another one planet star. We've been seeing far too many of them, unless that's the one I looked at before. Oh, there it is. So I guess this is the ship they already they already worked on, that the reason why that guy's leaving is because it's finished. Yeah, that has to be it. That has to be what that event was. He must have finished. And the computer has assigned a ship to the same system I'm already trying to use uh, Swift Treasure to explore. So we'll just send that ship down here to finish the work that Swift Treasure was doing and make sure to put them back on auto so that they don't spend the rest of the game in that system with me not knowing why our exploration is going so slow. Good. Hopefully we're going to be ready to colonize that planet soon. I think we're well on our way to building colony ships. Wait. Mm. Still not sure whether or not I should spend money on more ships because it does feel like we are maybe a little bottlenecked on exploration. Possibly the other way to unbottleneck ourselves is to, to get the next hyperdrive technology would also help. Yeah. We're almost there. When the next technology comes through, we'll be able to build that colony ship. And when we build that colony ship, 
we should be able to get Seleuce under our uh, control rather quickly, and that should help our, ex our economy expand even faster because they're going to like us so much and we're going to be able to develop their planet pretty quickly due to that, which means we should have a higher income pretty quickly. I'm probably paying a little too conservatively, to be honest. I probably should be spending some of that money that I'm just leaving there to make our expansion faster. But it's still pretty early in the game for us to be looking at having our second colony. And I'm not really concerned that I'm falling behind yet. Okay, so Swift Treasure is now ready to explore the system. The Circle Planet is the one that we should be worried about the most, because that's where the story has led us to. So let's just uh, stop you from exploring the planet randomly on your own, which is what I actually told you to do, and start you to explore this specific planet here. You don't have much fuel, so maybe we'll have to send you home after you explore the one planet, but that's okay. It's just another sign that we should probably be uh, trying to become more efficient with our use of exploration ships by making more of them. Oh, another abandoned station. That's cool. Uh, yes. Oh, that's probably what they just discovered. Of course it is. Okay. Oh, our first space monster. It's it's a vortical vorticar. Vorticar. That's how you, I'm going to say that. It's pretty cool. Probably going to need a fleet eventually. Hopefully our uh, our poor exploration ship escapes instead of just smashing its face against it. Oh, and we are now ready to build colony ships. So, colony ships are one of the kinds of ships that we do not spend much time on. They are perfectly fine being handled by the AI. They, they have very little nuance to them. I suppose it might be possible to min-max them if you really cared about that, but the ones that the AI comes with, out with are going to be perfectly fine. We will just take a look, though. That's a good-looking ship. I would take the weapons out if I didn't think they'd just put them back. Maybe put more fuel in. Hmm. As long as the reactors are are causing the engines to go fully, this ship is fine. We don't want them to slow to send slow ships out. Yeah. I could probably mess with this stuff to try to get it more range, but yeah, there's a good chance the, the AI will just change it back. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine the way it is. Anyway, I'm going to just end here with a cut. The last thing we're going to do in this episode is we're just going to officially send off this ship. They will build it. It will take the money out of my cash and send it over to make them part of my colony. And next time we'll have our brand new second colony. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you then.